a doom. Liverpool sounds so around the room. She got my face like I'm doing the booms. My select over the heavyweight show to take it to the moon. Test me a doom. Liverpool sounds so around the room. She got my face like I'm doing the booms. My select over the heavyweight show to take it to the moon. Test me a doom. Liverpool sounds so around the room. She got my face like I'm doing the booms. My select over the heavyweight show to take it to the moon. Been doing this for the longest, man can't track no issue to the team Everybody knows we are the strongest, there's no question I'm on this There's no shadow of a doubt, I'm branching it out all over the place My name's ringing out Test me a doom, Liverpool sounds so around the room She cut my face line with the with the booms My selector with the heavyweight shoot to take it to the moon I think we offer something different from your average UK MMA show. Um, you know, sure we try and bring um, up and coming UK guys, get them attention, but also, you know, we try and put on fights that other UK shows don't do. I've always said that from the beginning. This time out, we've got uh, some really good Europeans, um, a big American, and, you know, as well as top up and coming UK fighters. Cage Warriors has got a great reputation, obviously. I consider it the, the, the biggest show in Europe. It's growing all the time. It's got a great history as well. There have been some great champions in Cage Warriors um, we've, from this country that have gone on to bigger and better things internationally. Um, yeah, and it's just, obviously, you, you get treated really well as a fighter. Um, you're very well looked after, and the emphasis really is on, on the fighters, um, which makes it a fighter's show. Cage Warriors really seem to be the organisation that, that's trailblazing, if you like. They're the ones setting the standard in UK MMA with the blood work now. Um, it's mandatory that every fighter has to get tested for AIDS, FB, FC. Um, so really, it, it's, it's good to know that that's one less worry as a fighter when you step into the cage, um, that you don't have to worry um, about getting in there with someone who has something that, that could harm you. Other than obviously, there's enough to worry about when you step in there to actually fight, and it's nice to have that taken away from you. Um, the extra worry. I came from um, from a boxing background, um, boxed all my life, and I came into it from amateur boxing. Um, so yeah, I'd say, really I'm a stand-up fighter, but obviously I'm working the way hard and with the coaches that we have at this facility, um, my whole role game is, uh, is improving all the time. In terms of a fight camp, I'm, I'm not one of these fighters who lets himself um, get out of shape, to be honest. I'm always pretty much in shape, and I dare say I'd be ready to go within two or three weeks at a time. Um, but usually, I mean, we've got a great strength and conditioning coach here, Tony White from London Strength and Conditioning. And we start off really just with the hard cardio, the hill sprints, the running, getting the conditioning. Alongside that, I'll be working all the individual disciplines. So we'll be doing the BJJ with Michael Russell, my Thai boxing with Chris Carley, my boxing with John Tandy and my MMA with Paul Hines and just kind of working alongside all the disciplines with the strength and conditioning. Obviously, as, as the fight approaches, gets closer, um, we, when we know our opponent, we'll be working on individual things and a game plan, um, implementing that within the fight. So training will really step up in that sense. Um, the most important thing during the camp, obviously, will be the hard sparring. Um, we've got some good fighters here at this gym, um, so really the sparring is very important. And basically, we just look to put a game plan together get in incredible shape and uh, get ready to go. But everybody will assume um, with my physique and my size that I'm going to have no cardio. Um, it's quite common for people with, with my kind of physique. And the difference I put it down to is that I've always been an athlete. I played football to quite a high level. I played rugby league to a high standard. Um, everything that I've done I've always always been active and athletic. Uh, I've never been someone who just lifts weights. And the difference that I put this down to is the fact that I've always been large, I've always been muscular when I was 14, 15 years old. Um, so I'm used to carrying this weight around. This is my natural body weight. I'm not somebody who's just pumped myself up to this weight. Um, so if you ask anybody in the gym about my cardio, they'll let you know that I'm very meticulous about my cardio and it's something I work on more than anything. I don't, um, contrary to popular belief, if people see me, they assume that I just pump out weights all the time. Everything we do is functional. We, we never just lay there doing a bench press. Everything that I do with London Strength and Conditioning, like I say, it's functional movements and it's for a purpose to mimic any movement that we might have in the cage. Um, 
So yeah, so I quite like the idea of people questioning my cardio because um, there's one thing that I'll guarantee and that, that I'll never gas. Um, and I consider my cardio, it'll, it'll be better than most heavyweights, if not all the heavyweights out there. We couldn't do 16 shows around the UK. There's um, a lot of shows in the UK as it is. You know, you'd only be treading on toes and putting people's uh, backs up. We're still going to use UK fighters. Uh, if anything, we're giving UK fighters opportunities um, to go to new places, to travel, to fight guys from around the world. I don't think that means we're leaving the UK scene behind. You know, we're a UK scene at heart. We've got a UK TV deal. We're online on MMA Junkie. If, in, if anything, we're more available um, to fighters and fans than ever before. Well, the guys at Cage Warriors are getting maximum exposure now, um, fighting in 12 different countries, um, shows all over the Middle East, and I'd love to get on some of those shows, a Saudi show, Abu Dhabi, just travel a little bit and get myself fighting in other countries. Obviously, they've got um, worldwide exposure now with, with some of the sites like MMA Junkie showing their the shows all over the world. A lot of promotions are starting to realise what they have to do to put UK MMA in the right direction. Um, like I said, Cage Warriors are making all the right steps. And I think other promotions are starting to realise what they need to do. I think the matchups Cage Warriors do are great. There's like every fight's really exciting, um, mix up in styles, um, personalities, just it all works well. And Ian Dean does a great job of matching the guys. Um, show after show after show, they're getting more and more recognition. My last fight on Cage Warriors, it, it was quite a short fight. Um, but for some reason, I was more nervous than ever. I think just the hype of the opponent. Um, Dean Riley is a good fighter and um, I think I was very wary of his stand-up skills and um, my intentions were, getting, were to get him to the floor but I knew he was going to defend the takedown so I planned a little bit to try and mix it up and it worked. I faked the takedown against the cage so I faked um, going for the single leg takedown and I was hoping that he'd, he'd defend by trying to wrench the arm off. He did, he eventually tried to wrench the arm off and I come into a standing head and arm triangle, which I got the sweep with, and then he tapped out. Um, performance enhancing drugs, uh, I've, I've got a degree in sports science myself, so, um, and one of my dissertations was on performance enhancing drugs. Um, in my opinion, I'd say 70 to 80% of the top athletes in most sports are on something or another. Um, I totally disagree with them. I think, um, I think if you want a level playing field, I think it needs to be tested for. Um, I know someone recently, Rosie Sexton, she's been writing articles and she's been gunning for it. I think there does need to be testing, regular testing. Um, regular or random testing. Um, I don't think there's enough testing at the top level, in my opinion. I, I want to fight, I want to fight all the guys that are above me. Um, everyone that's ranked above me, everyone that holds the title, I, I want to fight them. Uh, I want to test myself, I want to push myself to the limits. Um, guys like Graham Turner, Ashley Grimshaw, they're all great, great fighters and they've been around a long time and they're the kind of people I want to test myself against. Some fighters need to do it, some fighters it's entertaining, like it's whatever the guy's personality really. Um, trash talking just isn't one of my traits really. Um, I will call guys out if, the, if there's a fighter that won't fight me or um, a fighter that I want to fight and I want to let him know that I want to fight him. I don't mind calling him out, but I'm not going to trash talk about him, you know. It's a sport at the end of the day, so I'm going to do what I need to do to get the right fights for me. I have every intention of winning the Cage Warriors featherweight title. Conor McGregor's getting in the way of that. Um, so my intentions right now is to win this fight and to win every other fight that's put in front of me afterwards until I've won that title. There's not that much footage of Conor McGregor out there, really. Um, I've seen a few bits, little bits and pieces. Um, his style is very aggressive, um, so I've kind of based my training around that, really. But obviously, I've worked on all aspects. But it, from what I've seen, he is an aggressive guy. So we'll see how it goes on the night. Cage Warriors 45 will see uh, two quarter final bouts in our middleweight tournament. Uh, the actual tournament starts 
February 11th in Lebanon, but there's two bouts there, and there's going to be two interesting bouts this time out with um, Jack Mason taking on Chris Fields. Um, Jack Mason, he's not maybe had the best time at Cage Warriors, uh, but then if you look at his two losses at Cage Warriors, both of them guys have gone on to Bellator. I'm a financial project manager um, for, yeah, for, for a large um, investment company uh, in, in the city. Um, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a very time consuming job, a lot of responsibility, uh, pretty stressful as well. So I think, you know, apart from the time constraints I have, you know, the, the MMA worked brilliant for me because, you know, I come out of work from a stressful day and I can go and, you know, punch someone in the face and, uh, and it just takes all the stress away. My, my boss is really supportive. She's a, you know, she's an Essex girl too, and um, she loves me uh, coming in with black eyes and stuff. She loves telling people that I've stepped out of the line at work, and uh, she's giving it to me. I fought, um, you know, uh, a wealth of, uh, you know, top class guys. I fought um, John Hathaway, you know, one of the, you know, top worldweights in the UFC. I fought um, uh, Norman Parisi, just been signed to the Bellator middleweight tournament. Um, for uh, Brian Foster, again, been signed to the, the welterweight Bellator tournament uh, and, you know, it was definitely a prospect in the UFC when he fought for them. Um, yeah, I fought, you know, for some of the best in the world. Yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've had over 30 fights. Um, I've noticed, you know, M MMA, when, when I've seen, you know, I've seen people from, who've been doing it before I did it. Um, and you know people that you know started a couple of years ago, and it's just taken over their life. And uh, MMA nowadays is is you know you know it's a lifestyle, and, uh, and I've just seen it change people for you know the positive. Uh, people you know lost weight, got fitter, you know even you know even their personalities change, become more you know more confident, uh, more respectful. Uh, MMA definitely you know is a uh, you know. Is, is a positive in, in, in my life, certainly. You know, I'm definitely in much better shape and a much more confident person. It's given me the opportunities to, to travel the world, meet new people, it's, it's brilliant. You know, there's a lot of egos in the, in the sport and especially especially the new guys nowadays think that, think it's gonna come, you know, real easy. I've had, you know, 30, 30 odd fights, I've had some tough fights, done some things the wrong way. But uh, there's guys getting to the sport now, you know, we've been training uh, two, three years. I think you know after maybe five fights, and then you get to UFC. Uh, it just you know, it just doesn't work like that. It might do for you know the real the real prospects or the real talent like John Jones, but you know not for everyone. It's a it's a tough sport to be in. All of all of my losses, are, I'm haunted at night. You know, when I go to sleep, I, I can't even remember that. You know, I've had I think I've had 18 wins, and I, I can't even remember the wins. Uh, I think about the losses all the time, uh, and I'm training. Uh, yeah, I would. I would love another. You know, if I ever got signed to UFC, if I was ever that lucky, um, I would. I'd love to fight John Hathaway again in, in UFC in the welterweight division because um, I feel. You know, I feel I could match up well against him now. I think. Uh, I think Brian Foster is the best guy I've ever fought, um, and he was a ferocious animal when I fought him. Um, the, you know, the real thing I took away from it is that he did not give. You know, he did not give an inch, and he was sharp on you know everything as soon as we you know the first takedown I got I ended up in his guard I felt him move instantly you know he was uh he was explosive he was looking for the submission as soon as we hit the mat and you know that's that's the real difference I've seen you know with uh with guys like you know Brian Foster he's you know he's just a ferocious animal real aggressive but really really tight with technique as well um and that's uh, to be fair since I fought him I've taken my uh, my training up a level to try and you know try and be as good as, you know, Brian Foster and, and those top guys. You learn way more from your losses. Uh, I never, you know, I never even think about what wins. I always think about losses, how I'm going to improve the next time around. Uh, yeah, it's just every, every single loss I've ever had just haunts me. Um, and, and it just, 
just drives me on to try and improve and, uh, and get better. Yeah, I've never fought in a tournament before, but to be honest, I'm just you know I've always been always stayed busy. I, you know, I've had 30 fights in you know five years, so you know I'm always fighting every six weeks anyway. So this is just you know business as usual. Just take one fight as it comes. I know that the guys in the tournament are you know top level. They wouldn't they wouldn't be in the tournament if they weren't top level. Um, we're fighting for the Cage Warriors World Title, so um, so you know I'm looking forward to the challenge and and really. I love to stay busy, so this is perfect for me. I think Chris Fields is a very tough challenge, but I don't think uh, I don't think he's the toughest guy I face. I'd probably say uh, Brian Foster is, is the best guy I face, but Chris Fields is a very uh, you know, very tough guy. He's got a very good record. He's very, you know he's big. I think he's about six foot four, six foot five. You know, a very good ground game. Um, so I'm taking him very seriously. And uh, you know, watching a lot of tapes um, and trying to work out a game plan to, to, to go out there and beat him. Chris feels in my way to, to win the Cage Warriors title, and, um, and I'm going to get him out of my way. Check it out. I'll keep it busy making power moves. Say what? I'll keep it busy making power moves. Say what? I'll keep it busy making power moves. Taking little steps as I go.